Hello everyone, back again. I'm going to do the uh, review as I'm listening to Aaron Rift of No DQ's Raw Recap from 10:31:22 Halloween night. And he already put a spoiler on there that looks like Alexa Bliss and Asuka won the tag team titles. So let's see what happened and what he thought. And he uh, kind of get an idea before no DQ Galaxy. Um, I give an opinion. Happy Halloween and welcome to No DQ's live no, recap no of WWE Raw for me. October 31st, 2022. And Tom LeVay said that he was glad that the children got one day out of the year to celebrate Satan. Thank you all so much for tuning in early. CC Drink Torvik 23. I appreciate it. Now, let's get right into this recap. We kicked off the show with a match. The Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair, going up against Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross back to her old persona. Thankfully, no more superhero training, whatever the hell her name was. Nikki A.S.H. It is gone. She's back to the old sanity version of Nikki Cross. Bianca had the early Unless advantage. She I'm going to say Nikki that what they're the doing Bianca is maybe slam, putting it on a face team so they can Cross bring up a heel team. Stunt. Maybe they bring moves, Toxic Attraction up and take the title. She's talking to the foot of Bianca, hmm. but then Bianca regained the upper hand, was selling her leg, and then both women that's ended up down thinking. on the outside of the ring. And that's when we had Damage Control show up. You had Bailey throwing Bianca Belair into the ring post. Nikki Cross was not happy about this. Nikki went after Bailey. She shoved her and then turned her attention to Bianca. Or someone could be hurt. There could be reasons. Nikki got back in the ring, and Bianca took advantage the of the surface. situation, hit the KOD, and picked up the one, two, three over Nikki. Afterwards, Damage Control continued okay. their attack on Bianca Belair. And then we had Asuka and Alexa Bliss make the save for the first time in several weeks. They yeah, were taking they out the equation. They haven't been back, showing up. They have returned. Asuka and Alexa helping out Bianca. And then backstage, Asuka and Alexa said they are not waiting for Crown Jewel to get revenge on Damage Control. They wanted a championship match on Monday Night Raw. The Cleaver, Colin Andrew with a $2 Super Chat says, Happy Anniversary. Hashtag stick to Walter's stick. There you go. Thank you for that, Colin. Using Walter's own hashtag and catchphrase. We had... What was supposed to be a sit-down interview back and forth between Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar, but Brock Lesnar was not there. Bobby Lashley said he exposed Lesnar at the Royal Rumble, exposed him on Raw a few weeks ago. Then all of a sudden, Brock Lesnar's music hit. Brock Lesnar stormed to the ring, and he called out Bobby Lashley. Of course, Lashley showed up. Lesnar went right after him. We had the big brawl, another pull-apart brawl, because, you know, when you don't really have good ideas for Brock Lesnar, you can always rely on the pull-apart brawl. Always yeah, he called that. He called that, he called that last week. In my opinion, but, hey. Crowd always pops for it, so what do I know? You got the referees run down, and you got several of the B team wrestlers out there. Not the actual yeah. B team, but some of the lower card guys. And I think a few NXT guys were there too. I think uh, Von Wagner was there at ringside. He, he did a match for main event, I believe. And one thing that they did do a little different from normal is they NXT. actually had Triple H show up Good. out there to make this seem like a big deal that it was so out of control that Triple H needed to come out there and try and pull things down. I did like that. However, the one negative is that he's yelling at them saying, if you guys touch each other, the match is going to be canceled. I'm not a fan of this. I've said this before. Like, if you're the wrestling promoter, why would you cancel your big marquee match? <laughs> exactly. You want people to tune in. Why would you cancel that match? Like, that never made sense to me. The promoter <laughs> threatening to cancel a match if these two guys touch each other. Because you're going to lose money if you cancel the match. And you could say, well, it doesn't matter if the match happens or not. Well, then you bury the guys by saying that they're not important enough, they're interchangeable. Then if Brock Lesnar's on, not on the card, then it doesn't matter. So I don't get it. I never understood that logic. So um, what would have made this a better than average pull apart brawl, brought it back down to just another planned pull apart brawl. Did nothing for me. I'm sure the match will be good. I'll be shocked beyond shocked if Bobby Lashley wins. Uh, I think this is Brock Lesnar redeeming himself from his losses to Roman Reigns. Like, I, I feel almost more confident about Brock Lesnar beating Bobby Lashley than Brock Lesnar or Undertaker beating Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34 when we all thought Brock Lesnar had no chance in hell and he ended up ending the streak. I had a feeling I, about I, that. I, I would say anything can happen, but I would be very, very surprised. And that's, I was that's very one shocked of my that they actually but, yeah, did it at Brock WrestleMania. We'll talk about it more Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, the live like, predictions what if he for Crown Jewel. Win, Stay tuned for that. YouTube.com slash Aaron Rift, no DQ. Also, we got the greatest wrestling Q&A of all time coming up. Let me do a quick plug for that. Oh, yeah, Tuesday, yeah. November 8th, 7 p.m. Eastern, myself and good old oh, J.M. John Meacham, greatest Q&A of all time coming up. Now, back to Raw. Seth freaking Rollins versus Austin Theory. Rollins has blonde highlights in his hair, and this was an odd match. I mean, it's heel versus heel, but Seth Rollins was pretty much the babyface here. Is this a, a slow turn for him or an unofficial turn? Fight. I don't know, but he acted like the babyface in this match. Crowd was singing his song. Seth Rollins fight. Theory uh, got so laid out over the barricade on the announce table, and Theory yeah. then turned up the aggression. Make him have no music if people are singing this song and he's a heel. Come on, guys. Or do it, like, at pay-per-views only or something. Like, or something. There's there's ways around that. Knock, knock. Winston. We liking that script I sent? Yeah, I'm <laughs> the detail. Right? 
Yikes. Drew Rollins into the steps. Back in the ring, they traded chops and punches. Rollins hit a couple of suicide dives. Hit the Falcon oh, Arrow. Beamer, but there was a kick out. Rollins also hit a springboard knee and a super kick. But once again, Theory kicked him? out of that. Theory then Theory. got a few near falls on Rollins. What? And a a heel versus blockbuster. Heel. Uh, but then Rollins was able to avoid the A Town down. Um, Maybe this is making Rollins Theory again. more Trash of a heel, though. Went for the pedigree, which is actually Triple H's move, but Seth Rollins does it. And anytime you try the other guy's move and you're a heel, it usually backfires. Like and night. Seth Rollins avoided the pedigree, hit the curb stop, one, two, three. Still of course, United States Theory champion. never Michael wins, title match, but never wins. Hell of a match here, I definitely recommend Money checking it out. Uh, my only, winner, I guess, complaint is that Theory loses yet again. Exactly. And this dude really needs some wins. Like, this was an awesome match, and if he had, like, some wins prior to this, the loss wouldn't have hurt him too much, but he just desperately needs a win. That's my only negative thought on this match. But it was it was fantastic. And I heard Under most about, circumstances, it would elevate uh, Theory in WWE because he had a really awesome match. Roman Reigns. The Nexus sent in a $2 super chat. Thank you for that. I can see what if they the do WrestleMania. switch the title well, there, and then they have Theory cash in on Logan Paul. the title I would keep it on him for, for the foreseeable Why future. Why not? Logan Paul is we like... Had Roman Reigns he's, arriving and he, he may the never be hot enough. The rest hot of the bloodline there on the like WWE. That. They You're mess him up. Right now. And I mean, he's just going to lose Lucy. later Reigns anyways. Reigns said that Sammy and Jay are working on the AJ and Lucy. He can at least show on TV that he won. the past two years, his opponents have been overhyped. Like he huge. smashed them every time. He's the greatest of all time. And now he's going against the guy that's had two matches. He just can't hype it up. So he passed the mic over to You know there's outside interference and Heyman started talking about how Logan Paul trained with Shawn Michaels, but that's still not going to change things. He will get smashed by Roman Reigns and said that Reigns cannot tolerate outsiders, and that's when The Miz interrupted. The Miz said he acknowledges Roman Reigns and said what? that nobody knows Logan Paul better than him. The right hand is real. There are pins in Logan Paul's hands. Miz said they can help each other out. He needs help with his stalker problem, Dexter Loomis. He who should okay, not be named. Okay, unless Miz joins and Logan Paul, Roman Reigns responded by, well, really knocking out The Miz with a Superman punch. Because I'm interested in what I want to see. Good segment here. I was fine with this. And then backstage, The Miz had an ice pack. Said WWE better well, not hear Johnny Gargano's tell-all interview. Really interested uh, it's going to expose either. The Miz and what's going on between Miz and Dexter Loomis. Then they Mustafa Ali came I mean, into the room, said it's unfortunate that Miz was trying to get their match canceled. And uh, that was that. So the match was not canceled. We'll get to that in a few moments. Unless they have him come out and Dexter Loomis comes out. Priest got the early upper hand. Uh, Roman, Anderson built up some momentum. Then he gets buster. distracted. Then Logan Priest Paul gets the title. Quickly, got on the apron. And then here he gets distracted. That would be kind of cool. Priest went for the reckoning, he could but then probably Anderson do something because with the connection with Dexter and Loomis the one, two, and Austin Theory. And then Priest, a big fight broke out. And then maybe make like Dexter Loomis and Austin Theory's partner or protector or whatever. Yeah, we really hit the low low and then Darren Styles and Anderson to hit her. Then Judgment Day came in, Finn Balor, Dominic Mysterio, and Valerie uh, hit the coup de grace. Right. And then Dominic went up to the top rope, did the Eddie Guerrero taunt, oh, interesting. and jumped off the top of the frog splash onto AJ Styles. Uh, he's really milking that Eddie Guerrero heat. Uh, so good stuff here with these guys setting up their six-man tag team match on Saturday at Crown Jewels. Saturday, remember, NoDQ.com will have live coverage. We had a little quick backstage segment with MVP and Omos. Yeah. MVP said that Braun Strowman will never measure up to Omos, and MVP has a surprise for Braun Strowman this coming Friday Crown on Jewel SmackDown. Either. Smackdown was already taped, by the way. NoDQ.com. You can get the spoilers for Smackdown if you missed it. Maybe you don't want to be spoiled, in which case, disregard what I just said. We had JBL coming to the ring, talking about how he was happy to be in Texas. Was praising all these great Texas names over the years, including Steve Austin. There you he go. The swerve was coming, and sure enough, he said that Texas was great until the snowflakes came along. He said that those uh, snowflakes, uh, those millennials, uh, uh, turned Texas into an embarrassment. He said that nobody good. in the crowd should be allowed to call themselves a Texan. He then introduced Happy Barry Corbin, great. whatever the hell his name is. Corbin thanked the fans for spending their last bit of money to see him, and then he said the truth is, dot, 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 interrupted by R-Truth, of course. R-Truth appeared as a cowboy, said that he likes JBL and Corbin's Halloween costumes, and, well, R-Truth got beat up by Corbin, got laid out with the end of days, whatever, I mean, I'm still not into this JBL-Corbin duo whatsoever, but Cleaver Colin Andrew loved it, I mean, somebody said it best on Twitter, like, JBL is doing Dan Lambert shtick, although I guess JBL was doing it for years, it's just played out, heel promo, ripping into the city, like, just not the best heel. At least he's back. Man. Walter Cruz with a $5 super chat says, Hello, I hope you are feeling woozy. Say yes to NoDQ. Hit like, share, hashtag stick to my shtick. Tune in tomorrow night. And if you're watching this Tuesday, then it will be later in the evening. 7 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday night for Crown Jewel Predictions. Thank you for that, Walter. And Caleb Jacobs sent in a $3.37 super chat. Thank you for that, Caleb. Says, Ray is just mad because Eddie is Dominic's happy. They should totally play up on that. I still think Dominic yes. should go out there and call himself Dominic Guerrero. Says, he yes. has no, no more ties to the Mysterio name. His yes, real dad, as far as he's concerned, it. is Eddie Guerrero. Come out there as Dominic Guerrero. That's I how you make a that. heel. They're not Next my up, we father. Have a trigger street fight, which is an annual He's match. He's already a heel. Really no, no good heel. Holiday themed match with Matt Riddle versus Otis. Elias was out there with Riddle, and Riddle was dressed up. And then eventually, as say he doesn't Ziki, care about Elias's brother, complete with the attire. The Guerreros, if they and gave Otis and not. Chad Gable were dressed up as Chip and Nails. Uh, they were dancing uh, to the ring. He didn't care about the ladder match. This was match, as you might expect. Uh, Riddle had the floating rope to the outside onto both guys, oh, but then Otis gave the upper hand for a while. Otis busted out the caterpillar for the first time in a very long time. There's a baby face move. That's why got involved, interfered, and because it was a street fight, it was technically it's legal. A Why not just get the ring for the entire match? Like, that's the thing about these
Uh, Elias, even the odds. Elias went after Gable, put him through a table on the outside, and then Otis missed the Vader bomb. Elias put a pumpkin over Otis's head, and Riddle hit the RKO and picked up the victory. Fun match as these usually usually are. Not my favorite of these types of matches. I feel like there's more entertaining ones, but this one was fine. Dean Ambrose did that to Cesaro. Then we had WWE investigating the true story of the story of the Miz. This was like 60 minutes. You had Byron Saxton interviewing Johnny Gargano, and this was the moment where Johnny Gargano revealed. Okay, let's see what this Dexter Loomis storyline is becoming. Drawing it out from then your months, it seems like. Come on, YouTube, still suck. Still getting a long, long video. Why you suck? Can't get comfortable at night? The Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed has your back, effortlessly responding to your mood. What's going on? He said that Dexter Loomis has his quirks, but we all do. Dexter was just trying to make a living. Dexter lost his job, fell on hard times, but then the Miz offered him money. And we had these like reenactments with the, the random actors dressed up as the Miz okay. and Dexter Loomis. And I guess the, the gist of this was that the Miz was paying Dexter Loomis to stalk him. It was all an act. The Miz wanted attention, wanted people to think he's important, that he's a celebrity, and that he has a stalker. What? And Gargano brought up how Miz was never going to beat Bobby Lashley in that cage match, and that's why Loomis was there to get Miz out. Uh, but then the Miz attacked Loomis, and Gargano said that the Miz must have stopped paying Loomis. The segment was entertaining. I mean, I guess this wasn't exactly what I was expecting out of all this, um, but hey, it's something. They're, they're trying to I don't really like that yet. add some humor to the show, which I'm all for, uh, but I'm not sure I was, like, blown away by this. It was it was mildly amusing, I guess, but I wasn't, like, rolling on the floor laughing by any stretch of the imagination. I guess I'm mildly curious to see where this goes next. And uh, by the way, I forgot to mention Miz versus Ali. Uh, this was before the investigation segment, so keep that in mind. Um, Miz was selling his face from the Superman punch from Roman Reigns, and Ali was making fun of Miz's tiny balls. Miz avoided the 415, oh my and Ali was able to hit this satellite DDT. Miz slipped to the outside. Ali hit a crossbody to the outside, DDT. and then Dexter Loomis showed up and grabbed the Miz. Somehow this was not a DQ. I guess the referee did not <laughs> see it. Uh, see, Loomis put his hand, hands on the Miz. Do a ref bump. chased Loomis away. And I guess this would explain, at least this whole Johnny Gargano thing would explain, why the Miz... And, and Loomis would be doing all these things and Loomis would get away with it because I guess up until this point they were saying that Loomis is not working for WWE so at least if the Miz was in cahoots with him or paying him off then that would explain how Loomis got in the building all these times I don't know whatever um, so anyways I don't know that I still ring, like it because a that's well, I feel like is making something up although it's like a bad not too, like benchmark making things up and not telling the truth um, so who knows but like a bad sure decision to this on next because of bad booking we then add our main event of the evening the WWE Women's like Tag Team Titles up for grabs Alexa Bliss and Oscar challenging damage control. EO Sky and Dakota Kai. You had Alexa showing event? some early aggression. Say? And damage control got the upper hand. Alexa ta tagged in, went after EO Sky, oh and everybody gosh. ended up on the outside of the ring. Oscar went for a Sounds kick, but missed so and hit the ring post. And this was kind of the turning point this for a while. Three hour damage control tried the upper hand. But then Probably Alexa Bliss tagged in, hit the code red, but there was a kick out. These commercials like go on forever. Sorry, I'm on a curvy, curvy road right now. Uh, curvy. Oscar came back in, went at it with EO again. Neil tried to come off the top, but Asuka caught him with a code breaker, applied the Asuka lock, and then Bailey got on the apron uh, just as there was a tap out. Eo Sky was tapping out, ref did not see it. Bianca Belair went after Bailey, and uh, they climbed up on this platform right by the timekeeper's table. Uh, there was a platform, and then there was more so tables set Bianca's up outside the ring. Team all has all the titles? And Bailey ended up putting Bianca through the table. Oh, maybe they'll do like Bailey all or nothing. Um, so I don't know if they needed the to do it was now. Out okay. By the Wrestling Network, so it was holy. Holy. Uh, and know, then Asuka avoided the moonsault of Eo Sky. Tagged in Alexa Bliss. Alexa hit the Twisted Bliss and picked up the 1-2-3 victory. So we do have new tag team champions. Okay, Alexa probably Bliss more and interesting. Damage control. And, uh, Can we give with damage Andrew. control a break, like though? They've been on for a title change, all the shit. I definitely shit. wasn't expecting it when we had the tab out with the referee distracted. They're on that was all, the like, back in the day, all the time on the episode, it sounds like. It wasn't going to be a title change. The reviews I but yeah, we did have a title change here. And again, I'll do my predictions. You have to wait for that. Bianca Belair versus Bailey, Last Woman Standing. That's coming up on Saturday. Ooh. Caleb Jacobs sent in a $2 super chat. Thank you, Caleb. Alexa and Oscar are both three time tag team champions. Then why didn't champions. they just do it in the ladder match? Though. Um, we really need some more why didn't they just, just feel switch like they're going to switch it? They're going to switch it. They're going to switch it. And I'm hopeful that we'll get some more teams like that. that can compete uh, for the women's tag team titles. Bianca wins. Overall, Raw was good point. for a Halloween show. I mean, it was the go home for Crown Jewel, so there should be some higher expectations. It was solid. I give it a solid B entertaining show. Unless, you had like, Charlotte comes change. back and the stuff with Johnny Gargano. It's interesting. And I'm going to Brock Lesnar appear with Bobby Lashley, although that really did nothing for me. But you all can't in all, really I can't really cost them both in the ladder match. It was a throwaway show. I felt like they did make some effort. Um, don't do a ladder Jewel, match. And then end the show more plus you watch it. We got the title change. Rollins versus Theory was really good. So yeah, and then solid B. Have Charlotte. Yeah, Connor with a five dollar super chat. Assume, Thank you for that. I mean, I'm just thinking on top of my head. Two thousand five. Christian shocks everyone and leaves WWE for TNA. 
that should have been a bigger deal than it was. I mean, Christian had a solid run in TNA, but a lot of people thought like this was a guy that WWE held back and could have done great things. He went to TNA, did okay, won the NWA title, but three years later he ended up back in WWE. So, yeah, I think that, that more could have been done with that run, but you could have said yeah, that about a lot Jeff of people. Jeff Jarrett always won the giant title. So that was for everybody. I hope you enjoyed the recap. Stay tuned to new issue of the latest wrestling news and rumors, and don't forget, well, I don't know if AJ Styles the title at that time. Q and the greatest ever I on Tuesday, November 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's coming up. Hope to see you all there. And remember, everyone, right. say yes to NoDQ.com, and I will see you all next time. Okay, well, that's my my review. I am not sure really what to think, but it doesn't sound like it was all that eventful. And we wait until the next show to really determine if we had reason for a lot of this thing to go through. But a couple, a couple eventful things, I guess, that could lead to something, but if they don't, then they don't. And then I don't know. I like them to use their TV time. They've got three hours. Use the show. Make some storylines. Make things matter. Make people want to watch. Make me want to come and out of my way to see the show. And I don't really see the reason for why it's that interesting right now. So I guess that's what it'll be. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, uh... Aaron and I talking over each other wasn't too annoying or whatever. I should have paused it and done it, but it would have made the video longer. But I appreciate you guys checking out the video regardless. Alright, have a good night, guys. Love you. Bye.